Batman Three Jokers sees Batman crash the Batmobile into where his parents' graves are outside Wayne Manor. Limping inside where, in the cave, Alfred reassures Bruce he will fix his parents' burial markers later as he gets Bruce out of the costume, cutting it off him and learning this time it was an umbrella that caused the gaping wound in his side. He remembers how he got all of the scars that cover his body, each telling their own story, but the Joker caused the most scars out of his rogues gallery. He hears the villain laugh as Bruce is transported back to the night his parents died where he himself is laughing, telling his parents he's laughing because the mark of Zorro was one of the greatest things he has ever seen. They soon find that their car in the alley has been moved, so walking down the alley a little further, they are confronted by a man with a gun, who demands their money and Martha's pearls. Thomas offers to help the man, but he kills him and Martha, turning the gun on the boy, but scared, the man runs off. Bruce is snapped back to reality by the news, which sees the last members of the Moxon crime family executed at a restaurant, with a report that it was the Joker who did it, still continuing his war of chaos against organized crime that began all those years before. The news reports that the Moxon crime family were accused of orchestrating the murders of the Waynes, but they were exonerated thanks to Joe Chill confessing to the entire thing alone, spending his life in Blackgate. Elsewhere, Barbara Gordon hits the gym, watching the TVs as she runs. The news runs a report about many Americans suffering from restless leg syndrome, but then shifts to the murder of a comedian by the Joker who live-streamed it to the city. The comedian is noted for performing in an oversized bat suit early on in his career. Listening to the news, Barbara begins running faster and faster, so fast that she breaks yet another treadmill. Later in the showers, Barbara is reminded of the gunshot wound Joker gave her all those years ago, all to prove a point. In a graveyard, Red Hood battles a group of Joker goons, finding them too soft, as yet another report of another Joker sighting is broken, this time seeing the villain at Ace Chemical, where he has murdered a group of people. Jason is soon subdued by the goons, who pick up the man's gun and plan on using it on him. Jason remembers being beaten over and over by the Joker as he smashes the goons face in, grabbing one of them and using him as a shield as another one fires the gun at him. Breaking arms and faces, Red Hood finishes the men off, learning they don't know where the Joker is. Jason figured as much, but he still wanted to stretch his legs. At Ace Chemicals, Gordon and Bullock and the rest of GCPD find a group of three men all dressed up like the original Red Hood. Harvey wants to know what's happening here since there's no way Joker could have taken down the crime family, the comedian, and poisoned these three men at the exact same time. Gordon knows that he must be working with two imposters. The officers around the men discuss the three crimes and how they each seem exactly like how Joker would do them, so there is doubts that it's imposters doing it. Batman appears, looking over the men, but he knows that thanks to the chemicals that bleach their skin, any DNA testing or fingerprint testing to prove their identities will be corrupt, same with the nerve damage breaking their jaws into smiles and making dental records impossible to match, meaning now, like Joker, the men are unidentifiable. Batman seemingly begins talking to himself, telling whomever he is talking to that the men were homeless and that these men were chosen to represent the three men who were there that night. Batman knows Joker wants them focusing on this and not the truck that was stolen as Batgirl above the crime scene tells Gordon that Batman has been talking to him, finding where the Joker fell all those years ago and became the madman he is today. Batgirl says that the Joker knew where all the cameras were in the facility, making sure she was spotted on them, and it's why he was seen at the Moxon murder and on the live stream. The Joker wanted to be seen at all three incidents. She tells Batman that the chemical vat was empty and the tanker was gone, so Gordon tells her that they will do everything to keep a lookout for the tanker, wondering what about the other crime scenes. Batman won't know until his investigation is up, but Barbara says the chemicals kept in the tank weren't in the records, something that apparently happens all the time at Ace Chemicals. But Batman knows the chemical was a similar mix to the one that created the Joker. Suddenly one of the supposed dead men begins cackling, causing the officers to rush him into an ambulance as Batman says that he will head to the comedian's crime scene and escort the ambulance on the way. The heroes take off and Bruce contacts Barbara, telling her that she doesn't need to do this, but she isn't going to let the Jokers stand and hurt anyone else. Bruce says that he saw a disappointed look on Jim's eyes, asking if Jim knows she's Batgirl, but Barbara says he definitely 
doesn't, since he's just as disturbed as they are, since whenever Joker is involved, they always prepare for the worst. In the ambulance, one of the EMTs strangles the Joker-fired man. The EMT is revealed to be Red Hood, who says Joker took everything from him and he's going to finally stop him, demanding the man tell him what the Joker said to him before being Joker-fired. The ambulance swerves into the Batmobile, alerting Batman and Batgirl. Batman jumps onto the ambulance, confronting Red Hood and demanding he stop and let the man go. Jason refuses, battling Batman as Batgirl slashes the ambulance's tires, stopping it in its tracks. Elsewhere, Joker drives the stolen chemical truck deep into the woods, coming across a small cabin, where upon knocking on its door, he is greeted by another Joker, delivering him a roadkill joke, which the Hawaiian shirt-wearing Joker already knew, having been the one who wrote it. The trucker Joker says that he's wearing his shirt, but the Hawaiian Joker says that taking the credit is his greatest act of madness so far, but it's nothing to compare to what the boss has coming next. Batman meanwhile administers the antidote to the Joker-fied man, apologising to the EMT about Red Hood. Batgirl confronts Red Hood, demanding an explanation, but Jason says that he was trying to find the Joker before he kills again. Barbara doesn't like the idea of interrogating victims, but the man says that that man wasn't much of a victim, since he's got a rap sheet that includes domestic violence against his own child. Batman confronts him, learning Jason was on Joker's trail before he came to Ace Chemicals, something he and Barbara have been doing as well. He knows the Joker isn't doing this alone and neither should they. The Jokers meanwhile meet with the boss, learning that they will be doing what they always do, making a better Joker. The boss says that one of the Jokers will set up at the factory and the other will help him with their casting call, planning on making a Joker with more meaning this time. Removing a coin, the third Joker flips it, but both Jokers call heads, meaning they both win. He tells one to come with him while the other draws the bath as at Gotham Aquarium, the Bat family investigate the closed building, finding it had been shut down by a leak on the mains, a leak caused by the Joker's men that Jason beat up. Bruce is impressed with Jason's detective work, wishing he had shared his information sooner, but Jason reminds him that Batman always goes after Joker alone. Bruce says that that was before there was more of them. Heading into the aquarium, Jason says that this isn't any different from any other time Joker has turned someone insane, but Batman says that these Joker seem to have a motive and they are in total control of what they are doing. Jason comments about Bruce light up bat signal on his chest giving them away but Bruce reminds him not to assume anything they face tonight will be the usual. Soon they come across some fish that have been jokerfied along with a great white shark. Jason's helmet tells him security doors have been opened across the facility and Batman knows they are there as Gaggy, Joker's court jester and his men arrive. Men open fire on Batman cracking the glass behind them as Gaggy orders them to leave Jason for him. The Bat family fight the goons as the glass continues to crack from the bullet holes. Gaggy manages to taser Red Hood, but before the Jester can have any more fun with the hero, Jason shoots the glass behind him, causing him to be eaten by the Jokerfied Great White Shark. Batman scolds Jason, since Gaggy might have known where the chemicals were, but Jason thinks that they are all in the water, which is now swirling down the drain. Batman knows that that tank couldn't have held all of the chemicals as a Joker appears, throwing some Jokerfied piranha on the Dark Knight. He smashes Jason in the head with the glass bowl, attacking the man and trying to pry off his mask, wanting to look into his eyes again. Batman and Batgirl punch Joker, tackling him through a window and knocking him out cold. Barbara asks if that's the real Joker, but Batman looks at everything they have seen so far from him, from the look, the smile, and the laughing fish. Barbara knows that while Joker changes appearances, his motives are straight as a river. Jason comes in, upset that he wasn't the one to take him down, attacking the knocked out man, but Barbara stops him. Batman is contacted by Gordon, telling him that that they have one of the Jokers in hand, while Gordon tells him that they have one cornered elsewhere in the city. Batman tells him that he will be right there, telling Batgirl and Red Hood to secure this Joker for Arkham transport, but make sure that they search him thoroughly. Later, after the two heroes have tied him to a chair, Jason knows that this Joker is different from the last time, finding this Joker to be thinner, and having not known his real name, how can they be sure that this is indeed the real Joker, and what if there always has been more than one? As Jason Jason looks over the very outdated tricks this Joker plays with, the Joker tries to hit him with his acid spraying flower, cackling that these are the classics. Jason searches the man's pocket, sworn to look for traps, but Joker says that he himself is the trap, since he's the cycle of pain each of them is trapped in, asking Barbara if she ever wonders why Red Hood uses his former moniker now, since who in their right mind would take the name of a killer? Jason says that he's owning what Joker did to him, saying that he will be his destruction. Jason 
pulls one of his pistols from its holster, telling Barbara nothing is going to change until they break the cycle of pain. He readies to shoot Joker, who goads him on, telling him Batman isn't there to stop him. Barbara pleads with Jason to stop, but Joker continues to talk about how he killed Robin and Batman arrested him and took him to Arkham and that was that. Until it wasn't since Jason survived and lived to fight another day. Or it's maybe because Joker beat him to the edge of his life because he wanted to leave the man alive since if he killed him, there would be no more opportunity to hurt him and in turn hurt Batman since Batman is all that matters, not Jason Todd. He asks if Jason remembers the words he said to him while he was beating his head in. Jason tells the man to shut up but Joker reminds Jason that he pleaded for his life, saying that he will be Joker's Robin. Joker laughs loudly as Jason remembers, suddenly attacked by Batgirl who tries to disarm him but nothing works as Jason pulls the trigger on his gun, shooting the Joker right through the head. The man falls over dead as Batgirl demands to know what Jason just did. Jason says that he ended the cycle and he knows Barbara would have wanted this just as much as him. Barbara says that she didn't but Jason asks when the last time Batgirl missed, showing her the batarang she threw completely missed him. Teary eyed, Barbara leaves Jason who looks over the body, really hoping the Joker he just killed was the right one. Later, the comedian Joker returns home to his wife who has luckily just made dinner for him. Joker kisses the nervous woman, asking where his son is. His wife goes and finds the boy, who is hiding on the staircase, not wanting to come down. The woman knows that he will upset his father if they don't have dinner when he gets home. The boy wants to leave, and the woman knows he's mad that his father hasn't been home much, but he loves the boy. She coaxes the boy down for dinner, where the comedian says that he has such stories to tell both of them, since he has had one hell of a week. His son is still disappointed, however, since octopus isn't his favourite food. Joker's wife says he, however, he's been a good boy lately and because of it, Joker tells him a joke about octopus triplets. Soon the comedian is taken out of his daydream by the criminal Joker, who arrives finding the comedian eating cat food and talking to mannequins. The criminal says that he's wasting time, grabbing the dummy despite the comedian's objections and throwing it to the ground, telling him that there is no one else but the Batman, and it was the comedian's idea to let the other Joker in on the the secret and now one of them is dead. Elsewhere at Jim Gordon's crime scene, Gordon finds Batman is already inside with the Jokerized dogs, sedating them and telling Jim to call animal control. Inside they find the body of Judge Walls, who was mauled by his own dogs. Jim wonders why the Joker went after the retired Judge Walls and Batman reminds the commissioner he never retired. He was forced out for being dirty and taking bribes and being the one responsible for Arkham's revolving door of inmates. Jim doesn't think anything has changed with the Joker but Batman Batgirl arrives, thinking differently and asking to talk to Batman privately. Batman asks where Red Hood is and Jim thinks that he's after the vigilante as well as the Joker, but Batman reminds him that the Red Hood isn't a criminal, however Batgirl says he is. Speeding off, Batgirl says that Jason killed the Joker, or at least one of them. Batgirl knows that now on top of two Jokers, they have Red Hood to deal with since he murdered the Joker, but Batman knows that they can't do anything about it. Barbara demands to know what Bruce means and and Bruce knows that if he was arrested, Jason would be forced to unmask, and as the only eyewitness, so would Barbara. Bruce says he'll talk with the boy, confusing Barbara since Bruce is being so calm about this and he should be furious like she is. Barbara says that just setting aside the fact that he killed the Joker, it was still a human being that Jason shot, but Bruce says that he needs to understand Jason's suffering because Joker hurt him and he healed wrong and got more violent, whereas Barbara got stronger. Barbara tells Bruce that he could have helped Jason, but Bruce says that he thought the boy was dead and he never will forgive himself for leaving him in that grave. Barbara is interested to know why Bruce waited until now to talk to them and Bruce just says that he was hoping Jason was more like her, rolling up his Batmobile window and taking off. Elsewhere, Jason beats a group of Joker's clown thugs, who say Red Hood hasn't even told them what he wants yet. Jason asks where the Joker's men put all of the chemicals they stole from Ace Chemicals, but the men won't say. Luckily, Jason's visor picks up on traces of pool cleaner on the man, so he knows where to go, hurting the man so he cannot escape before the cops come and get him. Batman and Batgirl meanwhile continue to track Jason, but Bruce says that he tried to trace the boy but he couldn't find him, so they're diverting to Blackgate. Where 
where Bruce says that when he examined Judge Wall's body, he found the man was beaten to death with his humanitarian award before the dogs got to him, and he never told Gordon about the fingerprints he found on the award, fingerprints which belong to Joe Chill. Batman heads into the jail, quieting the villains as he approaches Joe Chill's cell, remembering how with two bullets the man took his parents away. Bruce's voice breaks as he demands to know if Joe knows who he is, but no one talks back from the cell. Enraged, Batman kicks the cell door in, finding it empty. Batgirl arrives, saying that he was moved to the hospital wing, so heading there, they find that Joe Chill has been in the infirmary for two months, with stage 4 cancer. Barbara wonders how his fingerprints could have been on the murder weapon, and Bruce knows that with a little digging through the CCTV, they are bound to find someone slipping into the prison and paying Joe a visit. Bruce knows that he was led there as Barbara asks what the connection between Joker, Joe, and Bruce is, but he doesn't know, alerted to Jason accessing the bat computers from his helmet, which allows Alfred to find his location, and also signal that he's found the other two Jokers. Jason meanwhile finds the condemned Gotham City pool, breaking into it with his crowbar. Heading into the dark building, he pulls his pistol from his holster as he enters the pool area, finding the pool is filled with pale corpses floating in the Ace Chemical compound. Jason tests the water, finding it definitely to be the Joker toxin. Removing his helmet, Jason is surprised he beat Batman there, raiding into Batgirl as one of the corpses springs to life, pleading for help and clawing at Jason, who kicks him in the face as the body goes still again. Suddenly, the Jokers grab Jason, hoping that he would have come and knowing that he will be perfect. Later, Jason awakens, finding himself naked and tied to a chair as the criminal recounts the vigilante's life story, knowing that he was reborn as the second and Robin, but then he was reborn again, but things need to happen in threes, just like the Jokers. The criminal says that he was the first Joker, running Gotham before there even was a Batman around. Jason doesn't care, saying that he killed one of the Jokers and once he's free, he'll kill him next. The criminal bursts into pained laughter, prompting Jason to ask what the hell is wrong with the villain, learning that it hurts when he laughs. Jason wonders if that means that he's the real Joker, but the criminal asks who really is the Joker, putting on Jason's helmet which he has painted a Joker smile on, saying that they are going to find out. The criminal says that, that they have spent time trying to answer who is the Joker, finding a judge, a serial killer, and a surgeon, which the criminal knows were all really uninspired. But then there was Jason. He asks why Jason puts on a helmet and calls himself the Red Hood after what the Jokers did to him. Jason asks if they are all going to ask him that, telling the villain that it was a joke, which angers the Joker slightly, who says that they they left him with brain damage and permanent nerve pain and trauma, so Jason is more like the Joker than he would care to admit. The criminal knows that Jason blames Batman and he hates him for it, just like they do. The criminal tells him that Batman needs a better Joker and Jason isn't bright enough to be that. He asks the man if it hurts when he laughs as the comedian smashes Jason over and over with the crowbar. The criminal had hoped Jason could have been the new Joker, since it would have made a lot of sense being that he was Red Hood, but that's not what's in the car. The comedian laughs, knowing this time is more fun than the first time, smashing Jason over and over and hoping the man proves them wrong and he rises back up as the Joker. Later, Batman and Batgirl arrive at the pool hall with Batgirl kicking in the door. Batman tells Barbara they could have arrived quietly, but she knows if Jason's there, he didn't arrive quietly. Soon they hear some laughing and following it, they are suddenly ambushed by the Joker-fied people from the pool who jump on the heroes, asking for help. Batman knows that the Jokers have Jason Jason as they fight through the Horde, but the Horde take Batman's belt. While taking the belt, the Batmobile's call button is accidentally activated, so grabbing Batgirl, the heroes dive out of the way just as the Batmobile smashes through the wall. In the aftermath, Batman knows that they can still save some people and save Jason. They hear more laughter as the heroes come across a man they think to be the Jokerfied Jason, but Batman knows that he's not the right person as they enter the pool. Barbara asks why the Jokers are doing this but Barbara doesn't know as they find a bloody door and crowbar with Jason on the other side of it. Batman goes to help the tied up man but Jason panics demanding the hero not touch him as he crawls away muttering about how one becomes Red Hood and then the Joker. Bruce asks if he's alright but Jason throws his bloody broken helmet at Bruce asking him what he thinks since the man did this to him and he put him on this path. Jason says that he hates Bruce for leaving him in the dirt like he did and Barbara tries to calm him but Jason thinks that she's going to lock him up. Barbara hugs her friend, saying right now all she wants to do is get him someplace safe. 
life. Later on at her apartment, Barbara puts Jason to bed, learning from Batman that he's going back out to hunt down leads. Barbara wants to know what happens to Jason now, since he could have died tonight and he kills someone, so he needs Bruce there with him. Bruce says that Jason is safe now and they need to make sure Gotham is as well. Later, Jason awakens, wondering where he is and soon spotting the wheelchair and physical therapy books, he knows he's at Barbara's place. Batgirl soon comes in, finding Jason took a shower. Jason hopes that's okay and that he went through her things, of having taken a chronic pain book to read for himself. Barbara asks if he's okay, but Jason doesn't think he's ever been okay. He knows what Joker said about him being on a path like the Joker for years is right and he doesn't want to be, hoping Barbara believes that. Barbara says that she's willing to as Jason asks why she keeps the wheelchair and books around, wondering if it hurts to look at them. Barbara says it used to, but with healing and with her help from her father and a physical therapist and others, it helped her look at the positive. Jason knows that he never got any of that and Barbara reminds him that they all thought he was dead, including Bruce, and they all wished they had been there for him. Jason knows that no one has ever told him that, kissing Barbara, who pulls away immediately, knowing that they shouldn't have done that, just wanting to know that Jason knows she cares. Barbara says that she's sorry Jason never felt like anyone cared for him, as Jason tries to talk about the kiss, but Barbara says that it was only a moment and that's all it was, so right now they need to get back onto the case and stop Joker. At the Batcave, Batman goes over his Joker files, identifying the three Jokers as the criminal, the comedian, and the clown. Elsewhere, Joe Chill is broken out of Blackgate by the Jokers, who put on the killer's signature cap as the comedian pulls out a camera, hitting record on it. Joe doesn't know what he's meant to be doing, learning from the comedian that it is finally time for him to confess and explain why did he really kill Thomas and Martha Wayne. Meanwhile in the Batcave, Batman, Red Hood and Batgirl looking over the files on the three Jokers and their plan to attempt to create a better Joker by kidnapping people throughout Gotham. Barbara wants to know what a better Joker even means, so Bruce tells them that it's someone who has an identity behind the smile and the Joker wanted Batman finding all this out, he just doesn't know why. Jason says that two Jokers remain and that when he sets his sights on them, there will be none, since the others are too weak to kill them. Batman grabs Jason, telling him it's enough and that he's thought about putting a bullet in Joker's head too, especially after everything he's done to Barbara and Jason. Jason says that the man didn't though, he did. Jason knows Batman won't do anything to him since if he goes to court and his identity is exposed, Barbara's will be as well since she's his only witness, something Bruce knows. Jason knows the real reason why he won't turn him in is because it will expose Batman's identity. Barbara tells them to stop, angering Jason since Bruce is clearly manipulating her but Barbara says Bruce has always tried to help them. Jason knows that that's not true, wondering if the man will lock him up in the cave and forget about him. Bruce knows Jason has never understood this, saying that they agreed to work together on this, wanting to start over and do just that. Jason quiets down as Bruce goes over the files again, saying that through all of the failed Jokers, only three were successful. The criminal, who was focused on their overall goal, the clown, who was all about the lethal campiness, and the comedian, who has has a sadistic streak stronger than the other Jokers. Barbara thinks that one of them is the original and Bruce confirms it, saying that he made the other two Jokers at some point in time and it's all a joke to them. Barbara doesn't think so however and that maybe the others were there to hide the original's identity and maybe finally they can find out who the Joker really is. Jason thinks it's a nobody but Bruce knows there is something he can tell them, first apologising to Jason for failing him, wanting the man to leave Red Hood behind. Jason refuses, only wanting to focus on stopping the Jokers, since he doesn't need any of their help. Talk turns back to what Batman found, but the hero refuses to tell them what he was going to say, making Jason realise Bruce does know Joker's real name, but Barbara knows that that's not something he would keep from them. Suddenly an alarm goes off and later, at the burning black gate, Batman learns Joe Chill was taken. He wants to see the man's cell, looking around and quickly finding a series of letters written to Bruce Wayne. Batman shares his find with Gordon, learning from a guard that Joe would write letters all the time. Batman asks why the letters were never mailed, learning from the guard that he should probably go and speak with Reverend Evans.
happens. Outside Blackgate, Jason and Barbara talk, with the man admitting he knows he screwed up. Barbara knows that that's an understatement and he's put them in a difficult position, trapping both her and Bruce in this. Jason knows he will never do anything like that again and Barbara hopes not, since next time she will have to unmask herself. Bruce goes to see the Reverend, asking why none of the dozen letters apologising to Bruce Wayne were ever finished. Evan says that Joe was taking school classes while incarcerated and his learning disability slowed him down. Batman thinks that he started writing the letters when he got cancer, but Evans reveals that they were written a long time before he fell ill, since he truly was a changed man who often talked about his darkness, a darkness he was trying to understand more about. Evans says that the man never denied what he did, trying to explain it in fact with the letters. He asks the hero why no one would want to take Joe Chill as Batman finds a letter addressed to himself, the envelope containing a ticket to the Monarch Theatre to see the Mask of Zorro, courtesy of the Joker. The Bat family race to the theatre, finding Joker is definitely there. Bruce silently directs Batgirl and Red Hood to their breach points as he heads through the front door. The two other heroes break into the roof and the side exit as Bruce makes his way into the dilapidated theatre. Suddenly the projector starts up and the Joker says that the show will begin shortly as the movie begins, showing Joker telling Joe Chill to finally confess to why he really killed Thomas and Martha Wayne. The man doesn't fully understand the question but Joker knows all about it, having read the man's letters and the Reverend's notes, knowing that he has seen the light. Batgirl and Red Hood are suddenly attacked by groups of Jokerized theatre attendants, telling Batman of the ambushes as he finds the Joker with the tied up Joe Chill. Joker says that it has come down to this moment between them, the hero and Joe Chill at the scene of the crime. Joker is aware of the other heroes, the cripple and the child that are present, thinking of how he could have turned them into Jokers, but he knows Jason lacks sophistication and Barbara has too much heart, which is why he picked the killer. Batman grapples up into the roof where Joker is as Joe Chill's confession reveals that he knew who the Waynes were and he saw them coming down the alley, hating them for their wealth. Joker reveals that he has a bomb strapped to him, telling Batman to keep his distance until he says so. Batman tells Joker he knows he wants to make a new Joker from Joe Chill and Joker wonders how can it not be that man. Batgirl meanwhile is confronted by the comedian who kills the attendants before retrieving his camera, telling the woman to smile. Batman wants to know why Joker is making a better Joker and the villain says that is so he can mean more to Batman and to anyone since right now he is undefined chaos. As Red Hood battles the Jokerized attendants, Joker reveals that he wants to be more and be everything and Joe Chill can do that and become the Joker who matters. Batman calls Joe a sick old man but Joker knows that the chemical bath he's about to get should put him in remission. A simple trade of physical health for mental health. Joker's movie continues playing, revealing Joe thought people like him were there in their situations because of the Waynes, making him angry and bitter, so he thought that he would take whatever they had on them, but their son was with them. Red Hood meanwhile races up to find Batgirl fighting the attendants, but she's too late to warn him of the comedian who shoots Jason in the arm from behind. The villain goes to kill the man, but Batgirl rushes to him, grabbing the camera and smashing it into his face. Joker meanwhile fires on Batman with his Tommy gun, telling him that once Joe Chill is reborn, he can finally rest. Joe's video says that he later found out who the Waynes really were, people trying to help Gotham with what they had. Batman tackles Joker down as his lighter falls into the chemical bath. Joe's message ends with him knowing that he took the people who could save Gotham, and all these years later he still doesn't know how to tell their son he is sorry. The chemical bath explodes as Joker attacks Batman, laughing as he does. The comedian also laughs, saying that he can't remember the last time he had so much fun. The fire reaches Batgirl, overcoming her and Red Hood, engulfing the comedian who disappears into the flames, leaving his camera behind. Joker meanwhile knows that he still is going ahead with his plan, cutting the rope that is holding Joe Chill over the bath, saying another criminal falls into the burning bath and another Joker is born. Joe falls, causing Batman to grapple down after him, grabbing the man and grappling back up to the roof, just in time to catch Joker, kicking him through the theatre wall. Joker is knocked out as Joe frees himself, confronted by Batman in the alley. Joe says that he knows who Batman is, knowing they talk about him in Blackgate, 
and the hero knows what he did, wondering if he's going to kill him. Batman says that he won't, but Joe knows he deserves it, saying that he's truly sorry. Batman leaves the man in the alley, but quickly returns to save him from the falling building. The man thanks the hero as Joker awakens, saying that he had hoped to extend this a little more, but now they all go together, revealing the pull cord on his suicide vest. Suddenly, Joker is killed by the comedian, who wants the hero to take him in, wanting off this crazy ride. As the fire crews put out the theatre, Jason wonders why he's being sent back to the cave with the Batmobile. Barbara tells him to give Bruce a chance, but he wonders about the chance between him and Barbara. But Barbara knows that he interpreted that kiss very differently to her, apologising to the man. Jason takes off as Barbara is met by Jim, who knows facing the Joker can't be easy for her, knowing that he's kept his mouth shut for as long as he can, but he has to say something, saying he can support her and Batman, but Red Hood isn't someone she should be involved with. Barbara tells her father what she does isn't any of his business, taking off on her bike. Batman meanwhile rides with Joker to Arkham, who wonders if thanks to all of the drama, Bruce is feeling better. The Joker is well aware who Bruce, Barbara and Jason are, saying that he doesn't care at all and won't tell anyone, since the world can't ever know his true name, since it might lead to this whole thing ending. Batman asks the villain what he wants, learning it's not what the other Jokers wanted, since the clown wanted to laugh at the suffering of others and the criminal was an old delusional man who had the idea of creating a better Joker, which he finds was lunacy since a Joker with a name and identity ruins the very definition of him, which is why he regrets making him, or maybe the criminal regrets making him. Batman wonders what the punchline is, but Joker reveals that there is no joke and there is no final twist, not until he decides to put his hand on the knife he puts in Batman's heart. He says the criminal was wrong and he is chaos, the devil and nothing and everything thing to Batman, and it's not the Joker who's broken, it's the Batman, who was broken by pain greater than anything he ever could do to him, which is why he convinced the others Joe Chill would be the perfect Joker. Joker says that Batman saved the man who killed Thomas and Martha Wayne, and the man who sent Gotham and Bruce down the drain of despair. He knows Bruce felt Chill's pain, and it brought him relief to his own, meaning Joker healed Bruce Wayne's greatest wound, so now he can be his greatest pain. Joker lunges at Bruce, saying that he will cut and hurt the hero and keep twisting the knife until they die together. Later on, Bruce reads Joe's letter, going to see the man in hospital, forgiving him and staying with him until he dies. Afterwards, Bruce drives through the snowy mountains of Alaska, remembering how he told Alfred that even if Jason had killed the Jokers, it never would have been over for him or Barbara. Later, Jason leaves a letter for Barbara, telling her that he wants to make a change, knowing that he can't do it without her. He knows why he has come across cold and distant, revealing he admired Barbara's strength and determination, telling her that they could have been great together and he would give up being Red Hood for them, knowing that he could be something else or just be Jason Todd. He sticks the letter to her door, but it soon falls to the ground, collected by a cleaner as it ends with him telling Barbara he loves her and he doesn't think he's worth a chance, and if she doesn't think so, she can just throw away the letter and they will never speak of it again. Bruce soon arrives at a home as he remembers Alfred telling him that all three through the hate, will they ever learn who the comedian was? Bruce says that he doesn't want to sound like some people think he does, but he is Batman, and he's known who the Joker was since the week after they first met. Bruce remembers Joker's wife and how she told the cops that Jack would never let her leave him, wondering what he would do to their child if he was to keep him. Bruce gets out of the car as he remembers the cops revealed they pulled money together, spiriting the woman out of Gotham as they tell Jack that his wife and child were killed in an accident accident. They took the woman to Alaska as Bruce watches the mother and child living happily in their home. He remembers telling Alfred that no one can ever know Joker's real name because if the world knows it, his family would never be safe again, the press would find them, and then Joker will as well. So despite knowing Joker's name, he knows it's not what's important, and it never has been. Batman 3 Jokers was an absolutely stunning story of pain, guilt, forgiveness, and fighting with one's inner demons, played against the backdrop of the Joker once once again, messing with the Bat family, specifically members he has either had personal run-ins with or has deeply affected in some ways. Those obviously being Batman, Batgirl, and Red Hood, who actually becomes the standout character of the whole story, and kind of what a huge part of it is actually based around. Jeff Johns crafts a Jason Todd who is more than just a helmet and cool guns, showing a really fallible man who has years of built-up rage and anger inside of him and who only wants to hear 
that someone loves and cares for him, and wants to find someone who will let him love them. The title of Three Jokers actually end up playing a rather small part in the overall story, which is surprising given their name is actually in the title of the book. But the book does give quite a definitive answer to who the real Joker is, with the through line being Joker's name never mattered in the slightest, and it was never as important as what many people seem to think it was, both in universe and in our real reality. I thoroughly enjoyed this three issue series and John's work on writing the Bat Family again, delivering a story that treats the characters like actual real fallible people and he breathes new life into stagnant characters like Jason Todd. Whether the story is actually in continuity or not is still up in the air, but if it is, it's a wonderful addition to Batman's continuity, and if it isn't, it's just a fantastic standalone Elseworlds-like story. I'm going to give Batman 3 Jokers a 10 out of 10.